Sure. Uh, you know, like we should wait five seconds for the D-led chair. I know, right? <laughs> right. We're like, just the chair. Oh. We're going to let the chair out. Uncle's not here? Okay. You'd be like uh, Jamal Williams from uh, Lions, Rock, Paper, Scissors. I mean, we could do that. What, what was your childhood game of choice with that? Was it Rock, Paper, Scissors? Was yeah, it was Rock, Paper, Scissors. Scissors. Yep. What did you want to pick? Uh, if I'm going against my wife, I always go with scissors like four times in a row and I still beat her. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right. yeah I mean, rock, personally, but yeah. whatever. You beat me every time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, when you look back at Sunday, how much do you expect to see something similar to what Tampa did where in the first half where they basically were angling kicks away from Cordell? Well, we expect that every week, Mike, you know, with the dynamic returner. Um, like Cordell, you're expecting that, you know, teams don't want to lose a game based on giving their be the best player the ball, you know. So it's a benefit for us to have, you know, two guys that can handle the ball back there, other guys like Keith and Avery to go back there and, you know, catch the ball, field it, and then at least have a, give us decent field position or the offense has the ball the next play. So that, that's critical for us. And I, we expect it every single week, and those are situations that we work. Could you just move Cordero around to kind of make it a little more difficult on teams to figure out where he is? Is that something that would ever happen in a kick return game? Oh, yeah. Um, we actually did it after the first kickoff return. We did after the first one, and we were messing around just to, you know, we're playing chess with them, just seeing what they want to do. And Cordell, he's a very selfless individual, and it's all about us getting our offense in the best field position and being productive on that special teams play. So the one that we were talking about at the beginning of the second half, you know, that ended up working out in our favor where, you know, Avery was the deep returner. And, you know, you can see on the film, CP goes and blocks the backside too to kind of free up things and let Avery do what he can with the football. Do you think this is a, a good thing for, for Avery and his development to kind of get these, these reps? Oh, for sure. You only get better with reps, and those live game reps are very valuable for us as a special teams unit, especially as a returner, because there's always, especially having a CP back, there's always going to be a – a dynamic or a different situation that we're working, and he brings a lot of calmness to that return unit when he has the ball in his hands. Going back to one other thing, Punter, so where, what do you need to see from Cam or from Delson really to say, okay, I want this person this week or for the rest of the year? Like how, what do you need to get from them? The overall thing, Mike, I would say is consistency. Consistency is critical. You know, day in and day out. There's very limited special teams reps. We said it before, like in one of the other times where we talked, you're only guaranteed a kickoff and a kickoff return. So we might punt one time in a game. We might punt eight times. Hopefully we don't punt as many times. But if we have one punt in the game, that we better win that rep. And it starts with our protection, goes down to our punter being able to execute his technique, and then our gunners and our coverage making plays on the football. So consistency is critical for that position, as it is for all positions on special teams. You know, punting and what goes into a good point at that point. From, but the, aside from the obvious, what was Cam struggling with and what, where were things going wrong for him? For him, it's just his basic fundamentals. You know, one, just making sure he's doing his job and being consistent with his proper technique. And those are conversations that we have. You know, people could get, as a, you know, a team or a player, you could get fixated on the actual results rather than focusing on the process. So that's where we're spending all of our time each and every day, each and every week is the process because the results will come. And he's continuing to get better. So, you know, we're just going to keep working. Um, it's a great challenge this week going against New York. And, you know, right now we're still in the evaluation process when it comes to that position. Before you had the, the practice squad flexibility, it was almost like you would have to work out somebody and then you'd have to make a choice. Correct. What yep. does this week offer you and what are you trying to evaluate during this week? As, like, as you look at, I mean, Justin, uh, I'm sorry, Justin has been around the block and, mm -hmm. and you have camp. What is like? What are you looking for to make that decision maybe Saturday about who your punter is going to be? You know, we, having that flexibility, having 16 on the practice squad is great for our organization and for our team because it allows us to bring, you know, older players in too, not just limited to the younger players, to be able to always evaluate our roster. And we're always looking to, you know, continue to grow with the roster because our roster is going to change from week one to week 17. Um, so when it comes to a guy like Dustin and, and Cam, which is continual growth in that position, uh, you know, confidence, you know, and then also the biggest thing too is the consistency with their technique. 
because that's everything boils down to is they're being able to handle their technique at, at any given time, whether we punt two times in the first quarter or we punt two times in the fourth quarter and we're up two scores and they're putting pressure on us. So that overall consistency and, you know, working on their technique day in and day out and being um, and growing with that technique. So um, we have all the confidence in the two guys that we have here and we'll see how it goes. Yes, sir. Who would like this opportunity? Why Dustin? And what you know, like? What have you seen from his tape and in the limited time here? Um, why he was the guy that you wanted to bring in? I mean, he has years of experience. I had the opportunity to go against him when I was with the Chargers multiple times. Um, you know, br brings calmness to the position. Obviously, as a holder and as a punter, he, he has a track record of being successful. And that helps with, with our special team. So, and then he's, he's had a consistent career. He's always been playing at a high level, playing for a very good special teams unit when he was in Kansas City. When we talked earlier about the versatility of CP, I just wanted to ask your assessment in these first couple of weeks of uh, Richie Grant and Jalen Hawkins, how they've been for you on teams. You know, teenager, uh, Richie Grant, he's been doing a good job. You know, he's been, you know, focusing on his details. He has, he brings a lot of versatility when it comes to that position and, you know, making, you know, whatever, all four phases, whether it's blocking in space, covering in space, being able to move him in different positions. And that was something, you know, in the valuation process going into the draft, we knew just particularly for us on special teams that he could be a, a player for us. And, you know, it's great working with Richie because he really focuses on each and every day competing at a high level, and he wants to be the best at his position on each phase. What do you so. think that Cam can, can learn from a guy like Dustin who has been around this league for as long as he has? You know, you know Tori, I would say, like, with having Dustin, he's been around and he's been through the ups and downs. He's, he's experienced a lot of different things in his career. And it was what you've been exposed to and how you grow to it. That's what I believe in when you talk about experience. And for having a, a, a elite player like Dustin, a punter like Dustin, to have him in the building, that's done it for a long time. And he's had success at it. He's played in Super Bowls, been a pro bowler, and he's been through the ups and downs. To be able to provide that type of knowledge and experience to Cam is invaluable, especially for a person that's played that position. And Dustin's been great for the room. How many punters could you all end up looking at? Uh, we looked at a handful. Um, Number-wise, we looked at a handful. And you know, Dustin, was <clears throat> he was a guy we, wanted, we thought would fit well. For, with our organization right now. Yeah, you know, for, for you, because I'd say probably even like the um, they don't know the intricacies of punting like they would linebacker. And yes, sir. Know. How much input do you have and how many punters do you watch before you bring guys in in that situation? Like, do you always have a short list of maybe it's kickers or punters or snappers? I wouldn't say a short list, but that we're, you know, any given year, that list is always evolving and particularly now you know, with having 16 on the practice squad and having that flexibility to have in a specialist here because, you know, COVID protocols and being able to maybe, you know, eventually get to elevate someone, we'll always have a short list and that list is always changing day in and day out based on availability. So that list could go from two people one week, it could go to eight people the next week. So it's constantly, constantly always changing when it comes to evaluating. But as, a, as an organization, at every position, we're always looking at evaluating and making the most out of our roster. strategy in case young, something happens to young way because of COVID or something like that? Like what's, what goes into why that happened has been happening? You know, that's more of a question for Coach Smith okay. and Terry. But again, it just, when it comes to the roster, just making the most out of our roster day in, or day in and day out so we can operate at a high level. Is Hope going to let him? Yes. Yes, he is. Does that make any difference for you guys or for the opponent? You know, at times it makes a difference for opponents. No different than like going against in college football. Every you know, you go against a team like you know Georgia Tech back when they're running the wing T or Air Force. That kind of changes the, the the variable for that week, and you got to work on that for that particular week. The rotation changes on the football. It differs from a right foot punter or a left foot punter. Um, for us and special teams, it doesn't really matter. You know, being able just to get the ball where it needs to get to with the proper hang time and direction to help. You know. Um, complement our coverage units and our protection units. Going on to coverage, do, do the gunners need to understand something different, right versus left? 
Because like you said, the ball's coming differently. Yeah, it's well, it's, it's more so to return it. When we talk about direction for the gunners, they need to know the direction of the punt because I, I, we talk about, Coach Hoff and myself, we talk about not putting as much miles on our tires. If we're playing gunner together and we got to release to the right, all right, but he punts the ball left, now we're putting more miles on our tires just to get from point A to point B rather than being efficient so we could be effective at the point of attack. Oh, I mean, if you're a football player that affects the game and you alter games based on your ability with the ball in your hands or the, your ability because people want to not have, they don't want you to have the ball in your hands. I mean, you're an impact player and you're changing the game in that aspect and you're creating offense in the special teams game and you're putting points on the board. I think you should always, you know, be considered in that aspect just as a ball player. You think Devin Hester's a Hall of Famer? Eventually, I think, I mean, for sure. I mean, he's affected the game in so many ways when it comes to being a return specialist and the way special teams coordinators and coverage units prepare for a guy like him. I mean, it cha he changed the game. And if you're in a position where you could change the game in that aspect, I do consider you a Hall of Famer. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Yes.